On this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's looking at Ricoh's latest camera. I bring you the latest tech news, and I also get physical with Splinter Cell Conviction. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. First up, John's got hold of Ricoh's latest digital camera, the GXR. It has the option of interchangeable lenses to suit different environments and settings. So, to test it out, John took it to one of his tucked away spots in Birmingham. Ricoh's new GXR is one of the most unusual cameras on the market at the moment. We're used to cameras with interchangeable lenses, but with the GXR you change both the lens and the sensor at the same time. They come together in a unit which you clip off the body, which is a sort of chassis in effect, somewhere which houses the battery and the memory card, the LCD screen and most of the controls. Now, Rico claimed there are a number of advantages to this arrangement. Uh, you don't get dust on the sensor, obviously, which you might do on an SLR. Also, it means the sensor can be matched to the lens, so you should cut down on digital nasties like colour fringing or distortion. The body feels very well made with very solid controls. It's based around a magnesium chassis. Here it is in uh, cutaway form. And uh, I like some of the additional touches, like the accessory viewfinder that pops in on top and the way you can get a built-in lens cap with this really rather wonderful design. Well, I'm going to test it out by taking some pictures of one of Birmingham's underground secrets, some 1960s concrete murals under the Hockley Circus underpass. There are just two lens units available to start with, but they already begin to show that you can get quite different characters of camera this way within a relatively small volume of kit. Of the two, I much prefer the fixed focal length 50mm equivalent lens unit here. Um, it's matched to an APS-C size sensor, the kind of size you'd get in uh, most digital SLRs, and it really does give quite good image quality, right up to its maximum sensitivity of 3200 ISO. I'm much less impressed with this 28 to 72 unit, which pairs the sort of sensor you'd get on a normal small compact camera with a three times zoom lens. And I don't think the quality of pictures are any better than you'd get for a compact camera. And also, the long end of the lens is frustratingly short. The problem is, both units suffer from rather slow and I think sometimes inaccurate focusing. I'm kind of wishing I'd bought a different camera with me today. Also, everything's very expensive. The 50mm lens unit alone costs over £500. The viewfinders, £200. Everything I've got here today costs well over £1,000. I actually do like this idea. I think it is genuinely innovative. For it to work, though, the price has to come down dramatically. They've got to have a much wider range of lens units and they've got to crack those focusing problems. Right, news time now. And first up, to keep up with the rolling juggernaut, that is 3D television, Sony has just announced that they will be introducing 3D to the PlayStation 3 this summer. After first showing it off at CES earlier this year, Sony now states that 3D is a major part of its initiatives for 2010, and that they're currently developing 3D stereoscopic games to come in conjunction with the launch of their 3D-compatible Bravia LCD television later this year. They claim that all current PS3 models will be able to play 3D stereoscopic games as well as 3D Blu-ray movies through separate firmware updates, something that other platforms are unable to do. This will also tie in nicely for the release of the Avatar 3D Blu-ray, which is due in November. Last week's Mobile World Congress was full of announcements for the latest mobile phones, but three of our favourites included the HTC Desire, Legend and HD Mini. The Desire and Legend come preloaded with Android 2.1, and some analysts are seeing these two as contenders for the best phones of the year. And the HTC HD Mini is a Windows Mobile 6.5.3 phone, and is a smaller version of the HD2 with a 5 megapixel camera and a Sense UI overlay. They may have just been announced, but their prices and release dates seem to have slipped through the net, with the HDZ Desire coming in at the most expensive at just under £450, the Legend at just under £400, followed closely by the HTC HD Mini at just under £350, and they will all be reaching the UK market on the 12th of April. 
But if you don't want to shell out the full price of the phones, then don't worry, because T-Mobile, Orange, Vodafone and O2 have all announced that they will be stocking them on various tariffs. I've always been a massive fan of the Splinter Cell series, so I jumped at the chance when I got offered to have a go at the new game Splinter Cell Conviction, and to experience the moves of Sam Fisher himself. I've seen the agency I gave my life to turn against me. They're sure as hell gonna remember me now. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Conviction by Ubisoft is the fifth instalment to the much-loved Splinter Cell video game series. Now, it's not actually released until April, but I've managed to pull a few strings and get an invite to a press event to have a sneaky peek at the game, and also learn some martial arts moves that are used within the game itself. For Conviction, Ubisoft have brought in a new martial arts called Krav Maga, an Israeli self-defense system which is used in the military and law enforcement systems. It's a quick, efficient and brutal fighting technique which gives the ability for Sam Fisher to take down people in fast and effective methods throughout the game. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Now it's your turn. I've always fancied myself as a bit of a Sam Fisher type, so it was time to try it out for myself. My objective is to try to hit my partner on the chest. Okay, very simply. That's the objective. Well, I think I might stick to the game and leave it to the professionals. So I've just had a quick lesson in the art of Krav Maga, so now I'm going to see how Sam Fisher utilises his skills in the game. Conviction takes place roughly two years after the events of Splinter Cell Double Agent. Sam has gone rogue after discovering that the death of his daughter wasn't an accident. He begins the game going after his daughter's killer. But soon finds himself trying to stop a more serious threat to Washington, D.C. As well as Krav Maga, the game also introduces the Mark and Execute feature, which allows the player to mark enemies or objects and shoot them Jack Bauer style when you burst through a door or window. So I've seen the game and I've got a demonstration of Sam Fisher's Krav Maga fighting skills. So I'm definitely going to be penciling this in my gaming diary in April. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. But remember, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest goss from Gadget HQ. And don't forget to tune into the main show Monday nights at 8 on 5. In this week's challenge, Susie and Jason bring a bit of magic into your lives. John looks at the latest home cinema systems with the help from film buff James King. And Otis checks out a humanoid robot called Reen B. But from us here at Web TV, we'll see you at the same time next week. <laughs>